Hey, what's going on YouTube? Marine X back at it again here at the Nature Preserve here in Plano, Texas. And I wanted to test out a theory, a theory that I had that wouldn't have made any sense 10 years ago. So if you would have asked me 10 years ago, what do you think about an electric bike being used in a bug out SHTF type of situation? Could you even see yourself doing something like that? And I probably would have literally laughed out loud IRL because, you know, one thing is first off, they look nothing like traditional huffies as we know it. They had trash range. I mean, back in the day, I think folks, some of them were getting the ranges of upwards of 10 to 15 miles. And some of them cost more than a motorcycle or a moped or something similar to that. So it's like, why would I spend the money on something that's not tested? Doesn't seem to be getting any kind of real viability usage out of it. Well, here we are standing in front of the Hay Bike Braun. Shout out to Hey Bike for sending this out for the purposes of making this video. No money exchange hands, and they don't get to see this video before you guys, but they sent this out so that I can do this concept of can you use an electric bike for a bug out situation? Is it viable? Does it make any sense? And when you're trying to plan for the worst case scenario, do you want to make the main vessel for your evac an electric bike? Possibly. So I think to make life a little bit easier, I can give you my recommendation at the very, very beginning. If you're single or you're just a couple, and you just got a cat, that's it. Then an electric bike might make sense for bug out or SHTF. If you have kids, if you have like an old person you're taking care of or a loved one you're taking care of, an electric bike does not make sense as your main vessel for evac. It's just cut and dry off rip, all right? So I want you to think about that as we go through this process. All right, so let's further start off by talking about the pros of using an electric bike, specifically possibly the Hay Bike Braun because this is designed for off-road usage. This is not necessarily a concrete cowboy like a lot of other electric bikes are, but you can use them for evacuating a city. If you're a young 20 something or a young couple, more than likely you may live in the middle of a city. If SHTF does happen, then you can get onto a bicycle, an e-bike, and evac out of a city. You can use it to find a hidden survival cache of stuff that you might have in the woods or you might have at some outskirts of some type of building or something like that. And the thing about an electric bike versus a traditional bike is because of the throttle assist, you can get dozens of miles on the power of an electric bike. Specifically, the Hay Bike Braun has a 20, uh, has a 750 watt motor. All right, one thing that's also an advantage is that you have cargo storage. The Hay Bike Braun does come with this little, I don't know if it's an extra thing. They sent this out to me, but it's a little cargo rack that goes onto the over the top of the back tire but you have additional area and this thing can hold up over a hundred pounds very, very easily. So if you do wanna have extra cargo storage, you can throw that onto the back of an e-bike and not have to carry everything on your back. And because of the assistance of that throttle, you're gonna have a little bit more help when you are putting more stuff onto the bike itself. All right, next thing to think about is speed. Of course, an electric bike is gonna be way faster than you just pedaling with your two Flintstone feet trying to get out of a situation with the assistant motor, you're gonna be able to go faster, much faster than walking. Even when the battery runs out, you can use this thing as a traditional bike. You can jump curves. You can slip through small cracks and fences, especially with these narrow handlebars on the Hay Bike Braun. A little bit more narrow than other electric bikes that I have. I've noticed that at first I kind of didn't like the fact that these were so narrow, but I kind of like them for being able to squeeze between tree branches, fences, and stuff like that, that makes it a lot doable in those type of places. You're also gonna be able to use an electric bike to weave in and out of like stall traffic. You know, we saw all the movies with S SHTF. There always are some guys that are walking between stall cars that have been hit with an EMP on, or something like that, or, or vehicles have run out of, gas or gas is unstable because it's set too long or whatever you're going to be able to go through those stall cars on a highway and continue to press on with some swiftness with a little bit of due diligence stuff like that makes a lot of sense but there are some cons when it comes to using an electric bike as a bug out vehicle as an shtf vehicle first of all gear can be lost or easily stolen the cargo rack is a thing that you can be useful but it also leaves there are things that are vulnerable 
that can be snatched off the back of your bike. It can fall off if you don't strap it on there correctly. If you have a bike that has a basket on the front, it can fall out the back of that as well. Next thing is that water is not your friend. For this bike specifically, the battery's located in this area, but if you, if, if the battery was to get wet, then that's kind of game over. You don't want to get these batteries getting wet. So for me personally, I'll probably try to come up with a solution to prevent that. Next, you're not as noticeable as a car in a SHTF situation if you're the only car working, but you're still noticeable. It's a bike, it's a working bike. So that's something you have to think about. And then at the end of the day, it's an e-bike. So the hay bike, Braun, I'll put the, the most recent pricing on the screen, but you know, these things aren't necessarily the cheapest thing to think about when you want to think about something for a bug out solution, should you get something like this? That's something that you have to also consider as well. Let's dive more into the hay bike brawn itself. Not all electric bikes are equ uh, created equal. Let's just talk about that first of all. This is running a 750 watt motor and this one is more geared towards off road. You can use this as a concrete cowboy, as a, as a pavement princess or whatever, but with these big old 26 inch four by four inch fat tires, it really does scream to use it off road. Um, and also with the narrower handle bars, it screams that they want to use it off road as well. So you have to think about that. Mine specifically is in the pine green color, which actually looks pretty funky. As I mentioned earlier, this has a 1200 watt peak motor so if 750 watt but it can go up to 1200 watt peak has a 65 mile range we'll talk more about that here in a second now the whole thing says it can take up to 400 pounds capacity it does seem like it zips around pretty easily with that with no issues whatsoever this headlight in the front is an adaptive headlight so you can turn it on as it senses it's darker or lighter it will lighten and brighten as it needs to, as it's needed all right so there's an lcd screen which gives you basic functionality lets you know what amount of voltage is being sent to the motor the battery life that's left how fast you're going how long your ride your current ride is and then how far you've gone for this specific distance for this ride it also has a pedal assist um, settings to let you know how what you have pedal assist currently set at. So I have it set at two. It does have Bluetooth. I've never hooked my this thing up to Bluetooth. I don't really see the point, but we'll talk more about that as well. Finally, it's an all aluminum frame on this thing. So very, very sturdy and tough frame overall. Some things I like about it. It does have fantastic welds. Like I'm not a freaking welder, but I just like the way these finishing wells look really, really good in my opinion. Um, so it's a 26 inch frame that's indicated right here, 26 inch tires. It does have a seven speed manual shifter. I've never used it and I probably won't use it, but if you want a manual shift, you can do that with no, uh, with no problem. It has a thumb throttle control here. So that's how you control the actual throttle to go faster. All right, so the bike itself does have hydraulic disc brakes which are god tier they work really really well i will give them that you can t remove the battery here by just using a key and they include i think one or two sets of keys with this thing the actual seat does adjust with the lever mine hasn't worked since i got this thing you're supposed to be able to just push this trigger right here there's a trigger you're supposed to be just be able to push that and when you push that the seat goes up and down Mine does not work. The water bottle holder is useless for me almost. It doesn't fit any of my current 16 ounce water bottles. All of them touch the frame. Maybe it'll fit yours, but mine, they just don't work. These fenders are not included. You have to buy those. Um, they're extra. I think Haybikes, they sent them to me, but I think they are extra as well as the cargo frame holder. I think that's extra as well. Pretty good pedals on it. Feels pretty good on the pedals. And I think that's basically it. So let's jump on this thing and let's check it out and see if this is something that could be viable for SHTF and the pros and cons. So this bike is designed to be off-road, 100%. With the bigger tires, it's pretty freaking nice and all that good stuff, off-road, off-trail. But I will say this, is that this thing, the screen, I definitely wish it we had a colored screen. That's a first world problem. It's not a requirement. It's kind of more of a nice to have. If we could have something similar to that, that would be pretty nice. So another thing is that, hey, I talked about how I like the narrow handlebars, but sometimes the narrow handlebars absolutely can suck. So the fact that 
it will be a, a more comfortable riding position. Wider handlebars will be fantastic, especially when you're on like concrete. But you know, when you're off on a trail like this, it's not that bad. Now the steering is pretty, pretty trash. It is almost impossible to do a 90 degree. The actual manual shifter is completely laughable. I don't know why or who thought it was a good idea to put that shifter so far forward. It's nowhere near in a natural place where your hands would be when you're using this thing. So, hey, I like battery indicators. I like to know percentage wise how much battery I have left. You know, am I gonna be good to go? this doesn't have that as I go through this trail with these tighter turns and stuff like that it is definitely something that you can tell it's not designed for super tight turns they went for the motorcycle look on the front frame which is cool I mean you can do that but you know we got the uh, can it handle jumps and stuff yeah, I can handle that pretty easy. I am not a big fan of the actual throttle being a thumb throttle. I would prefer if it were a twist. This is kind of a I'm not a big fan of that. And this seat adjust thing, this digs into your hand as you ride, especially the fact mine's not working. I wish this could just go away altogether. The pedal assist control is kind of like too far up. I wish it was down more, which I'm pretty sure I can just loosen and bring it down. But I wanted to show you guys what this thing looks like stock as much as possible. So the screen is a lot left to be desired. Like I say, I would like to know my battery percentage versus just having it all like that. But can it handle bumps and bruises? Yeah, it can.
So the question is, is an e-bike, specifically the Hay Bike Braun, worth it for SHTF situations? Where if you're trying to escape something like I am right now, a suburban neighborhood, you're in the suburbs, you're in the city, this might be something that you can consider. Specifically, the pros and cons about this bike is I can tell you that I've talked about some of the ones on the trail, but just overall, some other things I don't like about it is that the chain is exposed and it kind of like, depends on the type of trousers you're wearing. It feels like at any moment, your trousers can get caught up in the chain itself. Something to think about. The bottle holder, as mentioned earlier, seems to only be really good for like 16 ounce cans. It doesn't really work well for water bottles. And then the seat, although comfortable, once you get about 10 miles in, this seat's not very comfortable at all. So overall, I have probably put in close to 250 miles on this thing. And the biggest takeaway I have when it comes to this bike is that the estimated mile range is pretty, it's not very accurate. I think the, it says that you can get up to 65 miles. Don't quote me on that. So I weigh about 220 pounds and I've, I've written this just just you know no bag on i've rigged this rigged up with a battery bank a power bank I've, I've ridden this thing rigged up with the saddles just to see how it would go and the furthest that i got was about 50 miles and that was before it got so uncomfortable with the the little battery marker on the lcd screen that i didn't feel comfortable going any further than that but if it had a percentage maybe i would feel more comfortable but with just having a battery bar on here it doesn't really give that much functionality the app so there's a hay hay bike app as well the hay bike app once you're in the app itself it actually gives you a percentage of battery that's left so right now the the bar says three bars, but the app says 39%. If that could just be, I don't know if it's a firmware update or something like that, if they could just slap that onto the actual LCD screen, that would be pretty dope. Speaking of the LCD screen, this isn't the 90s. I really feel like they gave us a treadmill screen that could have been thrown on anything from the 90s. And we seem to have the same thing here when it comes to this thing. So, you know, I've seen, I have other bikes. I've seen other bikes where they have colored LCDs and some of them have OLEDs, et cetera, et cetera. I reflexively turn off my e-bike when I go into a store, when I get to my destination. When you turn this thing off, it erases the distance that you've gone. So say you stop at a convenience store, you lock the bike up, you go inside for two minutes, you come out, you turn it off, it erases the data that you've already done. So if you're trying to keep, you know, you're trying to calculate how far you've gone for one specific trip, you, they really want you to do that in the app. I don't want to be forced to use an app. I want to use my phone for music, use my phone for uh, offline trail maps. And if it's a F SHTF situation, my phone may have downloaded maps that are more important than the Bluetooth settings of the Hay Bike app. It really sucks that there's only front shocks and not rear shocks on this bike. This bike is 100% designed to be off-road. I enjoy taking this thing on trails much more than I enjoy riding it on concrete. There's better cruisers for concrete and stuff like that. I'm not sure what's going on with this auto raising feature of this seat right here. And I it should be working. Mine is not working. Oh, there it is. Finally worked. So maybe, yeah, that's pretty crappy. Now my auto raise feature works. Finally got that to work on camera. But overall, would I recommend the Hay Bike? My recommendations for the Hay Bike is yes and no. Nine, I'm gonna say 70% no, 30% yes. So if you mostly ride trails, if your bug out location is in trails or in, it's, it's in a location that's grass or something like that, this might be suitable for you. There's other e-bikes that have fat tires as well. But if you're mostly a pavement princess, concrete cowboy, this is not a, very comfortable concrete, concrete cruising bike. So that's what most people want electric bikes for. If your SHTF location is almost all pavement the whole way, you there's better bikes out there than this one. So for most of you, this bike is not gonna be for you if you're an adamant 
trail rider or something like that, I probably still would steer you away from it just because of the thumb throttle control. That's very annoying, especially when you're about six, seven miles in that thumb throttle versus the twist throttle is, is extremely annoying. You know, great looking bike, got plenty of compliments about the bike itself. But when they're asking you to spend over a thousand dollars on a bike, this is just a hard recommendation to make. Comment down below, do you own a hay bike? Would you use an electric bike for SHTF bug out situations? I think personally, if I was single, if it was just me and the missus by ourselves and we lived in the city, we live in an environment like this and we need to bug out our location being mostly grass this would be something that might be suitable for us we might just change the seat out for those long type rides but this would probably be suit me would it suit the missus absolutely not this is not something that is for her i would love to know your comments down below if this is your first time stopping by hit that subscribe button join the battalion i would love to have you part of the battalion if this is not your first time stopping by well thank you once again for watching me run my grape for everyone else we'll speak soon